Welcome, this is Melinda Barlow, CZT, Certified Centangle Teacher. And today's lesson is Double Zinnia by Tracy Long. And it's beautiful. And today we're going to use some color pencils and color. I've done it on a brown towel with um, a brown pen and a black pen and some white jelly roll on gray. I love doing things on gray because you can use various methods of shading and then I've done it on a white tile and we're going to work on a white so I can demonstrate some um, watercolor pencils that um, I found that are absolutely delightful to use. The best thing about them is the sharpening they're easy to sharpen. But before we start, I just want you to remember to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single lesson. And there's a link below to the store where you can buy different items that I will show here, plus a, a link for the watercolor pencils. So let's get started. And I'm going to just use a regular white tile. And we're going to start out with an oval shape. And I say it's about the size of a, a small jelly bean or a just a regular bean. And then I like to make my center just do a little you can do it. I will put the step outs also on my blog so that you can see them. But I like to make mine over to one side. Then we're going to put orbs around the outside edge. all the way around the outside edge. Now the su simple and fun part. And if your hand is a little shaky, you're going to find out this flower is really forgiving. Matter of fact, it's better if you have a little shaky hand. So you're going to come out and do a fan blade. And I'm going to come in just a tad closer on this so you can see. So I call that a little fan blade, meaning it's narrower at the bottom. And I purposely do a little shaky or wobbly fan blade. I don't want it to be real straight. And one of the girls in my class said, before we started this, she's, oh, all my lines are are wobbly today and she I said wait till we do the next angle so you can see that we have all these little wobbly fan blade and now we're going to come and do another one this makes it that double zinnia that just comes in between those fan blades and doubles up this particular um, tangle pattern. And so you see there you have double zinnia. Wasn't that simple and easy to do? And then we're going to do that same stroke in here that we've done on other flowers where we stroke up and we lift out. It's kind of Lent, you want to just take off. So kind of lift your pen as you come to the end. And I put about two in there on each of those upper fan blades. And if you have a lot of space, you might could put one in behind if you've got room. But I want it to be very light and airy, so I give it that, I kind of lift as I 
do that particular stroke. Now, we're going to do one that's kind of holly bod underneath because that's kind of fun to do. So we'll make another oval or a little jelly bean shape. And then color that in. Then we want to put our little circles or orbs around the outside. And if you start on the line and then go around, you won't get a, a start and stop point. Okay, now we're going to put the fan blades in. And now we're at kind of the underneath where we're kind of doing the holly bob effect. So it looks like it's underneath. Now we're going to come back and do the underneath or the double layer. And there we have one that looks like it's laying underneath. And now you can put one that's right close and you could pretend like you did your um, oval jelly bean all the way around. And I forgot one step, there's a little these little fan, these little st stripes that come out from the center, they kind of help. Now we put the circles. And now the fan blades. or the petals, but they're fan blade shape. So you want them to be a little narrower at the base and wider as they go out. And as shaky as you want them to be. And then we'll come back in and do the little strokes here. So now we're, we've got three on there, so let's give it a little color. And I'm just going to show you, um, let's see if I can find, okay, this is Aquamarine, and it's, I've sharpened it once, but I'm just going to show you that you can sharp, it's just got a great little easy sharpening, but you don't want to throw away these. I, I keep those in a little pile on my, let's see if I can show you where I, there they are, on a little pile on this side of my um, mat that I'm coloring. Because I'm going to use those later because they're watercolor and I'm going to use them to color the um, a tile and then um, draw on it. So now I'm going to take my little Aqua Marine, and I'm just going to put a little, just a little at the base of those first fan blades, not the underneath fan blades, but the top fan blades, so that I can, um, then I'm going to blend it out. And I love that Aqua Marine. Oh, I forgot to do my little strokes on this one, so let's go back in. And I've had people ask me about watercolor, why I don't use water to blend my watercolor. And I know it sounds crazy, but I don't feel like I have control over my watercolors when I use water. And I like to have lots of control. So I'm going to actually come back in and put a little color at the tip of the outside blade. I am somewhat careful, but when I use the odorless paint thinner it, it, to, to blend, and I, it, I just have control. Okay, I had someone ask me also um, why I changed paint thinners. 
and um, I usually use um, Mona Lisa outerless paint thinner but I really don't it really doesn't matter this one I think someone gave me and um, it really doesn't matter what paint thinner you use so I'm just going to dip my shading stump in my odorless paint thinner and then I'm going to blend the watercolor pencil with that and it I just have lots and lots of control if I use water and I've tried that on my um, blending stump and I've tried it with a watercolor with a brush and I've tried it with water brushes and none of them give me that control that I like. I just really want a fine control on here. And you can see that it's blending it out. Now, that one is, they're, they're pretty plain. So I'm going to come to my black watercolor pencil and I'm going to put a little bit of black on the tip of here and blend it so I get just a little darker shade. but I could probably put even a little black right down in the corners here so you can play with that and just give yourself you know, time to play with it and you can see how that's going to be just beautiful and when you want to be careful when you um, change colors and watercolors I'm not going to worry about it here on the tips you will blend out so you need to clean your shading stump with an emery board and I'm going to go ahead and finish this out and put some embellishment and I'm just going to let the camera run and then I will speed it up And there we have Double Cinea. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check the links below and have a great day.